This is my 14th general council. Beginning with gratitude as a commissioner in 1974 in geographical Guelph, Ontario, to this non-geographical uh, site as a corresponding member. A highlight at each general council as far, former moderator has been coordinating the moderator's table meal for our uh, ecumenical, interfaith, interchurch, and, and global guests. It's an honor, an honor again this, this year. You, our Canadian and global guests and partners, are, are part of my answer, in fact, to who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? As a seven-year-old in mission band in, in Gander, I would have answered, Jesus was a lover of children. Me and all children of the world. I knew that because of the stories that were told, the Bible stories, and in particular, the pin that we proudly wore of Jesus and a colorful array of children. In addition, we had wonderful stories and games and food in our World Friends magazine. As a nine to 11 year old in Explorers with the motto, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only etched in my mind and my heart, I would have said, Jesus lived what he taught, we must do the same. And then as a Canadian girl in training adolescent under the leadership of Jesus, I would have responded, Jesus was the greatest of leaders and oh yes, I want to follow as we continued to recite our purpose to cherish health seek truth, know God, serve others. I had lots of questions. Why and why not? How fortunate I was to have a minister and deaconesses and women leaders in the congregation who listened to my questions, who themselves were committed to Jesus' call to follow me. Fast forward to studies, biblical studies, biblical hermeneutics, a gold mine of treasures for exploration and digging and harvesting. Questions, answers, questions, critical examination. After a time of discard and disillusionment, scripture again became my song for the journey. Research and debate around God is dead, the Jesus of history, the Christ of faith. Why? Why not? Building on the nuggets of childhood, as I read, researched, and questioned, justice leaped from the pages of Scripture. Over and over again, God hears the cries of God's people from Hagar and Ishmael to Miriam and Moses to other prophets to prophetic Jesus. Jesus following the prophetic path of his forebears names his calling to end oppression, to set all people free, to call his people and all of us to account crossing our sinful constructed barriers of race, class, culture, and gender. Jesus' parables viewed as the most authentic of Jesus' teachings captured my imagination and my mind. 
the parables prefaced usually by the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, and then a story of what life is like when we follow God's way on earth. The, the Jewish concept of shalom, peace with justice. More fittingly today, the kinship of God. What life is like when God reigns, when we live as kin to one another, kin to the cosmos, one world, one human family, justice making and justice seeking. Who do you say that I am? Jesus was a living parable of the kinship of God. That's why death could not hold him. The Roman rulers could destroy his body, but they could not destroy God's vision. That's what the disciples experienced after the death of Jesus. And as the early church struggled to come to grips with who do you say that I am, they concluded that Jesus was so attuned to God's will, so at one with God, that for Christians, Jesus and God became as one. Jesus was God bearer. And that is why today I work passionately and persistently for a guaranteed basic livable income within our United Church and with my multi-faith group of, of Jews and Muslims, Hindus and Sikhs. It is why mission and service is not an option for us as church members. Why it is imperative that each general council include our ecumenical interfaith and global partners. Why Black Lives Matter and the Me Too movements and living out our apologies with indigenous peoples and others. Who do you say that I am? Jesus is living parable. Jesus is God bearer calling me and all of us who choose to follow to end crucifixions wherever they are found to work for peace with justice and the integrity of creation with our ecumenical interfaith and global partners and with all people of goodwill. May it be so.